Hi, it's Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Welcome back to another practice diary vlog. I was really happy to see in the comments of the Monday diary vlog that you are excited about this vlog series. So I hope you'll keep enjoying the series. If you're new here, I am posting Monday through Friday each day to show you how I organize my practicing and what I practiced each day. I do not keep a practice journal. This is just a demonstrative purposes kind of journal so that I could remember what I practiced this past week and explain to you a bit. I've been practicing for two live streams happening this month. On the 16th, there is the Music Never Sleeps Dresden Music Festival. On the 24th, I am doing my Play for Charity live stream concert to raise funds for direct relief, a nonprofit organization that helps to provide medical equipment and masks to frontline workers. So if you can donate a dollar or five, please do that because it really adds up. I'm very excited that we are, I think, around 44% last time I checked. Yep, we are past 44% of the $10,000 goal, and I hope we can even exceed that. So thank you. And now I can start this Tuesday diary vlog. Yay, that wasn't too bad of an intro. So on Tuesday, I started practicing around my normal time, 11.20. I like to start around 10.30, 11, 11.30 maybe. I played through Schumann Vogel als Prophet. One day I will get this German pronunciation correct. I also ran through the Scarlatti and 99% uh, memorized is what I wrote down. For the Schumann, I had some minor dynamic details that I wanted to do because that piece in particular really requires very delicate playing and I wanted to perfect those details. For Scarlatti, I just had to work through a few ornaments and that was about it. At 11.35, I started the Chopin Andante Spionato e Grande Polonaise Pliant. One day I'll get these names correct. <laughs> I started off with the left hand, trying to get that thumb turn in Andante fluid and smooth. Then I played through the Andante. At 11.45, I wanted to record a clip for social media because I think it's so peaceful and nice, but 12.02, I wrote, forget it, left hand bad. So that probably means that the turn just wasn't fluid enough or I was still quite awkward about it. So I kept trying to just practice that Chopin piece. until 1 p.m. when I wrote, losing focus, lunchtime. Essentially, any time that I find myself losing focus during practice, it means that I have to stop to eat. But then after eating, I had food coma and I got really tired, so I took a nap. And then at 2.53, I woke up because Brahms was stuck in my head. And this happens even when I don't really feel like practicing or if I'm really tired, a piece of music will get stuck in my head and annoy me so much that I just have to go to the piano or go to you and practice and play it. So I tested my memory and I realized my left hand had 90%, not quite 100, but I worked on it and then I moved on to the second of the three sections that I divided the piece into, just to recap from my Monday diary, in case you missed it, I divided the Brahms Intermezzo into three sections so that it is easier for me to learn and memorize it in a short amount of time. And since the piece is in ABA, it's very logical that I divided the piece into three sections. But 
then at 3.20, I started having anxiety, or at least I wrote down anxiety, text break. And then 3.35, went back to Brahms. This was when things kind of went downhill. I wrote, I feel like a case study for science project because I am not used to keeping a practice journal like this. This does feel like a science project, you know, when you have <laughs> to bring home a small animal for a science project or a plant, <laughs> and then you have to write down the different developments that it goes through at each hour. <laughs> this is kind of what having this practice journal feels like. So this is definitely just for you for vlogging so I can explain to you what's happening, but this is not something that I would do in real life. I started having anxiety from playing Brahms. So I wrote down, can't focus, Brahms sentiments, dot, 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 bringing up inner anxiety. This inner anxiety is just a weird state that sometimes I enter into when I practice romantic pieces, especially pieces like Brahms when it's so deep and you can't really describe, I mean, even deep is not an adequate word, but when I play a piece over and over again to try to get myself absorbed inside it to bring the best out of it, in a sense, I get so entranced into this weird state of mind and state of emotions that I have this kind of inner weird anxiety, not depression, but some sort of weird mix of nostalgia sentiments. And that's what I was swimming in. Until 4 p.m., I decided to switch to Chopin. I had no descriptive words after Chopin. I just wrote Chopin at 4 p.m. So that means I was not feeling great. At 4.38, I paused for a phone call with a friend and then went back to Chopin at 5.11. And I decided to record myself. I guess I was feeling down from practicing Brahms and all the sentiments that came up from that. I was already in not a super positive mood. So when I recorded myself, I wrote such bad constipated rubato. Sometimes you don't realize until you record yourself and listen back. Since I learned this Chopin piece a long time ago, wow, I guess 11 years ago was when I learned this, I had a lot of bad childish habits and I had to undo a lot of them. But once you start a piece at such a young age, certain things just stick to you without you really realizing how bad they are. So I decided to jolt myself from my current interpretation and the current history that I've had with it and turn to other recordings. So I listened to Rubinstein and then I Googled spianato and I realized it means smooth slash even, which is why I was so obsessed with trying to get that left hand in the andante to be very smooth. And then I listened to Michelangeli. For this particular piece, I liked the fluidity and the freedom that Michelangeli had. Also, he had a lot of nuances. That's what I wrote. Freer polonaise, nuances, so smooth, exclamation points, two exclamation points, effortless. So after listening to them, I recorded myself again. Not exactly sure what happened after I recorded myself the second time. I didn't write anything here in the journal. At 7 p.m., I went back to Brahms Intermezzo and I realized that I only memorized one third of the second section. And then at 7.10, I ended. And under accomplishments for Tuesday, all I wrote was improved the Chopin. And then <laughs> I have a tiny little note that says, Tomorrow will be better with a smiley face, trying to encourage myself to be a little bit more positive because lots of emotions, lots of criticizing myself. So not a super great day. Although I think the criticizing probably helped me a lot to improve myself. So I don't know. 
it wasn't a great day though when I was experiencing it. And that's it. That was my choose day. Now you know that I too have bad practice days. Sometimes I don't feel super great or I felt really sad actually that day, but it's okay. I'm still very grateful to be alive and moving forward. Before I go, I promised in the Monday diary vlog that I will be picking one question from the first six hours of comments. The reason I need it to be in the first six hours is so that I can also have time to film it and edit because I'm doing this every day. So make sure you have your notifications turned on. Here, whoops, <laughs> here's the question from Sophia. I have to apologize in advance because I know I don't have a very good answer for this, but this had the most likes and I feel like I should address this. So you wrote, question, you said you had a small injury when you were around 12. Honestly, when I saw this, I was like, when did I tell anyone that? It's not that significant. I've also lost count of what I've said in the past 114 vlogs plus the hundreds of social media posts I've made. So I have forgotten what I've told people by now. But anyway, can you talk a little bit about how you recovered? My very unsatisfactory answer is that all I did was not play the piano for two weeks. I really cannot remember what was the exact cause of that injury. And I know for sure that it wasn't any technical position of my hands because if it was, I would have remembered. I have an injury and my teacher says that I'm curling my pinky, which is causing tension. Did you have a problem like this? It's also very difficult for me to give one answer to say, this will give you tension, this will not give you tension because everyone is different. Size is a huge factor. Sometimes you might have to curl because someone's hand is just so big. Maybe the one little thing I could say that could possibly make this answer a little bit more helpful is that I think it's very important for you to be very aware and self-aware of how you feel. Not only your emotions, but also just how you feel physically. In general, you don't want tension because it really affects how you play. Thanks for asking the question. I wish I had a better answer, but that's really all. I hope you enjoyed this Tuesday practice diary vlog and I will see you tomorrow. If you've enjoyed this, please consider donating to Direct Relief even if it's just a dollar or two, it adds up. Thank you so much for watching. Keep striving. <laughs> Bye.